Hi, today I'm going to cover how I built my motion activated Halloween decorations for this year, which I refer to as Skullhead. And Goblin Head. So hang around. Hi, welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Today I'm going to cover the build of my Halloween props. I'll talk about what worked, what didn't work, and how these can be used. Now, I built two different models that are about the same construction wise, but there is a little bit of difference in the code. Of course, these can be used standalone with no Wi Fi or no network connection whatsoever, but what fun would that be? We have to add MQTT to these so we can also use them in home automation. You can use the chapter links down below if you want to skip right to that part. I'll also cover a little bit about how you can use these beyond Halloween since Halloween's already in our rear view mirror and how you might uh, dress them up and use them for other holidays as well. So first let's cover the electronics we're going to need for this project and then we'll get into the physical build uh, right after this. But first and foremost you're going to need a servo. Uh, this is what's going to obviously uh, rotate our head back and forth. Um, I went with a metal gear servo. To be honest, I started out trying one of these cheap little plastic uh, servos and by the time I added the weight of the mask and everything else on there, these things basically just burn out and strip the gears. So I would highly recommend that you get a Metal Gear servo. Uh, for the eyes, we're going to use a two common cathode RGB LEDs. For our sound, um, we're going to use a DF Player Mini MP3 player and we need a micro SD card to hold the audio that we want to play. Our controller is going to be a Node MCU, an ESP8266. Now most of you, if you've watched my other videos, you know I like to use the D1 minis, but in this particular case we're going to need the additional GPIO pins that are offered by the Node MCU. And as always we're going to mount that onto an ElectroCookie uh, prototype board so we can solder everything securely. We're going to need a PIR motion detector to activate uh, our prop. And of course we'll need some DuPont cables, some other miscellaneous wiring, and a 5 volt power supply. Uh, the one I'm using here happens to be a 10 amp. You're probably going to want at least a 5 amp. This can pull, uh, especially when it gets up to maximum torque. So I would recommend at least a 5 amp power supply. So those are the electronics. I'll cover the, the build of the board a little bit. But if you really want to know uh, the details of the wiring schematic, uh, the Arduino code that's used, I'll have a link to a, a related blog article down in the video description, and it will cover everything in full detail. Okay, let's take a look at the head. I've tried to turn the lights down a little bit here to hopefully avoid some glare. Um, this is just a simple styrofoam head that you would get that normally would, you know, hold a wig or something like that. And all I've done in this case is I've taken my two... Uh, common cathode LEDs and basically first I put the mask on and marked the eye position because these heads are kind of small compared to the mask so they may, may not line up perfectly with the eyes so you know you probably want to take your mask and put it on there then mark the position of the eyes then I just slightly dug these out and if I can get this up here where you can see it and basically hot glued those LEDs into the right position making sure that they were aiming straight forward now each LED has four connections, a ground, and then the that's the long pin, and then on one side of the long pin will be your red, on the other side are your green and your blue. So I simply connected some DuPont connectors, uh, a couple of clips, and then left that hanging off the back. So that's all there is to the head assembly itself, and now let's take a look at the frame. So as you can see here, the frame is simple one and a quarter inch PVC, and it's just stuck together. Uh, I opted not to glue these because I wanted to be able to disassemble this thing and store it between holidays. So a little bit of a rubber mallet to bang these together. Um, what I didn't realize was how top heavy this thing was going to be and that's going to come back and bite me in the rear end which you'll see in a little bit. It will definitely be something I'll have to approve on for next year. But the next challenge was I had to find a way to mount that head to this PVC frame. And the bottom part of that needed to be stationary for the servo, while the top portion where the head is attached could rotate freely to the left and right. So let's take a look at how I did that. 
So first, for mounting the head, I needed to put the head on a platform. For that, I just used a small quarter inch piece of, of craft wood, drove some uh, like inch and a half nails through the bottom and really just stuck it down onto the styrofoam, then did some hot glue around the outside edges to hold it in place. And you also see here is my horn that's going to attach to the servo. For that, I just used a couple of small nails and nailed that into place. So now, basically the head should be able to rotate when it's sitting on the servo. Next, I needed the servo platform. So what I did for that was, again, I took a piece of scrap wood and attached a little uh, square piece of wood to the bottom, screwed that in, and then routed out a space for my servo. Okay, so I've got that there. Now, the problem is, I now have a square piece of wood to go into a round hole. For that, I actually 3D printed a part. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, um, you'll have to find some other way to make this make this fit. Maybe you could cut a hole into a cap uh, on top of a PVC, something like that. Uh, the blog that I linked to down in the video description will have the STL files for these as well. But this simply fits on there relatively snugly. And then this will just slide into place. It only fits one direction. There we go. And I also put a little hot glue around the bottom. But now this is pretty stable. And what happens is now our head just fits on top of the servo. But if you look at that, there's quite a bit of a gap there. And notice the head is wobbly. And so what would happen is when this thing would rotate, especially with the weight of the mask, it would end up just tumbling off. So I had to figure out a way to fix that. To do that, I once again turned to my 3D printer. And I basically printed a ring that was just slightly, maybe a half millimeter smaller than the gap between these two attach that to the base. I'll show that. I'm going to attach this and I'll come back and show that. Okay, now with our ring, supporting ring, just screwed in here to the to the wood base again, we can now place this on top horn and you can see it is definitely much more stable, uh, allows it to turn without wobbling. And so now all we've got to do is take this and stick this back in the top of our frame and our head assembly is complete. Okay, so I briefly wanted to cover the controller. As I mentioned, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. My blog article has complete wiring schematics. Uh, but to take a quick look here, here's our Node MCU. This is our uh, DF player mini MP3 player with the micro SD card in it. And this is where the, there's a slight difference between the wiring between what I call skull head and goblin head. Goblin head which is this controller, actually has independent eye control. So each individual eye can be a different color. Each individual eye can blink, whereas Skull Head actually has a single control for both eyes. Part of the problem is the number of pins that that takes. So it takes three pins per eye plus the ground. So that was going to be six pins taken up, and I basically had to repurpose the RX and TX, which disabled the Arduino uh, serial monitor. Again, no big deal, and I cover all that in my wiring diagram. But the one thing to note is that, again, so this can easily be taken apart and stored. All the connections are either uh, DuPont cables, or in the case of the uh, power supply, I actually used a couple of Wago connectors. So all this can come apart and can be stored. The only other piece of this, again, is now going to be the motion detector. And again, you see I've got this in a little 3D printed enclosure, a lot of hot glue in there. But I put these... Uh, basically these fins on there to try to narrow the range because this normally has about a hundred degree range and I wanted a little bit more focus uh, in terms of, of tripping the motion detector to have this thing activate on Halloween. Even with these fins I found it was a little bit too wide so a simple low-tech solution was to put an empty toilet paper tube over the top of this and now I can have a very narrow range in terms of directing this where I wanted motion to activate the props. So I'm going to put all this on the frame and we'll come back and take a look at the uh, completely assembled prop. Okay, so let's take a look at the completed wiring here. See, I got our head mounted and all we've done is simply zip tie our controller onto the back, zip tie the speaker onto the front, and made all of our connections. Now obviously all of this wiring is going to be hidden uh, underneath the cloak. The only thing you want to make sure you do is make sure you have enough slack in the wiring to your eyes to allow your head to turn without pulling on those wires. And if we come down here to the bottom, you'll see that the motion detector is actually mounted down here, so it'll be out from underneath the cloak. And it's put on a little bit of an angle so that you can, can move this around and, and realign it uh, again to get, get the motion where you want it. 
And again, our power supply connection is down here at the bottom, which again will come out from underneath the cloak. So before we put the cloak on here, let's uh, fire it up and give it a quick bench test. Okay, we're gonna fire this thing up and the boot process is set up so that the eyes should light up. Then when the boot finishes, it should play the default audio sound. There we go. Now we can also check the motion to make sure that it's working. And you can have the head turn either direction or you can change the eye color and that's all done through the settings of the Arduino code. So it looks like the bench test is done. All we've got to do is put our mask on and hang our cloak and it's ready to go. So here we are with the cloak installed. Move out of the way over here, the motion detector. Um, you will notice these couple little elbows that I put on here. That was to help prop this cloak up so it wasn't weighing down on the head. This particular cloak's pretty narrow, uh, doesn't have a lot of, in fact, you can't get it all the way wrapped around you as an adult. But by adding those in here with a couple of zip ties, I was able to get the, uh, the hood not to weigh down on, on the head to stop it from rotating. Then a few uh, strategically placed safety pins. Uh, it's still pretty easy to reach in here, pick this thing up and move it. But at this point, it's ready for Halloween. Skull head is done exactly the same way. He's a little bit taller. Um, but as far as that, the rest of the assembly is exactly the same. So let's see what happens on Halloween night. So the props were ready. The forecast looked good. There was no rain in the forecast, which was a concern of mine because these props would not have done well in the rain. I also had two cameras set up to catch reactions. I have a real link camera on the front of the house already, and I also opted to set up a wise cam on a tripod to try to get some good reactions. However, what I wasn't counting on was high winds. So I'm set up here just before Halloween starts, and you can see how gusty the wind is. Remember how top-heavy those were? Yep, there it goes, face first. And here's the, the same collapse uh, taken from the wise cam angle, and down goes Frazier. So I'm in the process of trying to repair this first one. You can see that Trigger Treat has already begun, and there goes the goblin head with the winds. And once again from the other angle. So... Obviously, uh, I have some work to do next year on fixing those, and I think the one thing I will do is I will, will change the base. Unfortunately, due to the high winds, it resulted in us having to pull the props back to get a little bit of a wind break from the garage. So we had some really priceless reactions. Little kids were especially fascinated, but unfortunately, I didn't get to capture a lot of video. And I think the, the problem you see, again, here is at that base. With that being top heavy and these not being glued, that is way too easy to rotate. So next year I will probably go with something like this with a five way where I can put supports on the front and the back to stop that from rotating. But um, that's, a, that's enough of that. I did want to talk about now that Halloween is past. Uh, these things can operate independently with no Wi-Fi, but what fun is that? We need to add MQTT so we can use these in automation and home assistant. I'm going to talk about that briefly next. So as I mentioned, MQTT or a hook into to Home Assistant is completely optional. Uh, if you don't have Home Assistant, don't use MQTT. That's fine. This will work without it. It can be disabled or enabled in the settings. But why would you want to do this? Well, maybe you want to build automations to have this react uh, when someone opens a door. Maybe you want it as an alarm clock. Uh, I've just set up a little mock thing here showing that you can control the head position through MQTT. We can obviously change the eye color. And in the case of Goblin Head, we can actually independently change the eye colors. So we can change them together. We can change them independently. The same thing with blinking of the eyes. We can blink one eye. We can blink the other eye or blink both eyes. And again, I don't know how well you'll be able to, to pick this up, but we can also play the audio. <laughs> and in the situation where you have multiple audio tracks, you can select which one to play. So again, you probably wouldn't want to control this through Lovelace like that, but having all these things available through MQT would allow you to build all kinds of automations and use this thing inside your house as well as having it be activated by motion detection. So that was my first year attempt at some Halloween props. You might be saying, well, thanks a heck of a lot. You released this video one week after Halloween. Ah, oh, but no problem. 
Maybe I actually released it a little bit early. Simply change up the costume, change your sound effects, and you're ready for the next holiday. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! So you can use these props for lots of things. In that particular video, I was just clicking around like crazy in Lovelace. Uh, I actually plan on doing a little bit more synchronized uh, with that with the code instead of just having it having it yank around everywhere. But you can have a lot of fun with these things and adopt them uh, for whatever holiday or particular purpose you want. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, please let me know if you found anything that you liked or found useful. Hit that like button down below. That lets both me and YouTube know that uh, you found this video useful. And if you want to see more of my videos, click that subscribe button and ding that little bell icon if you want to be notified when I release a new video. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.